The Great Depression and the Recovery by Amelia Green. The year is 1929. Half of the U.S. families are living below poverty, can't afford to make ends meet, and are too poor to pay off any debts. Families are also unable to buy any goods or services, and many companies have done mass layoffs, leaving people jobless and making families even more poor and forcing them to stand in local bread lines to eat. Family men are searching hard for jobs by day, and these men are waiting hopelessly for job calls by night. American farmers, already in a financial struggle, can no longer afford to make ends meet. They are barely producing, and they are unable to repay their bank loans for their farming equipment. Families are now left homeless, displaced, and looking for work and for shelter. Investors are now in shock as news breaks that the stock market has crashed. Thousands of U.S. banks have just gone bankrupt, and many, many more are headed that way. The U.S. citizens are now panicked and rushing to withdraw all their remaining funds out of the local banks before it's too late and they lose it all. This is the Great Depression, the worst economic catastrophe in American history. The question is, how did we get to this point? Well, several issues contributed to this crisis. The agricultural industry has been suffering for a while. Farmers had overproduced and received little pay in return for their crops. To meet their family's needs, they began consuming and using their own crops, such as burning corn for fuel. Not long after, the farming industry faced one of the worst droughts in history in the Great Plains. Due to the great loss in crops and in revenue, many farmers couldn't repay their bank loans, which they used to purchase their farming equipment. Both agricultural and industrial production levels plummeted, and many workers became unemployed. Some families were even forced to sell their belongings just so they could buy food. Investors bought mainly stocks on margin with bank loans. Later, these investors had to pay up on stocks that ended up being worthless. Therefore, they couldn't afford to repay their bank loans either. International trade was another issue. Trade had already plummeted partly because of higher taxes and due to worsening economic conditions, U.S. banks ceased to further issue loans to other countries. And in return, those countries already in debt to the U.S. did not repay. Thousands of U.S. banks took hits from many different angles, thus causing them to go bankrupt. The government couldn't even afford to pay the workers. The question now becomes, how do we recover? From this crisis. Fast forward to 1933. Franklin D. Roosevelt, elected as the 32nd President of the United States, comes into office during this depression. His first item of business is handling the banking crisis. Within his first 100 days, his administration reforms banks and creates the FDIC to protect the accounts. They pass legislation to stabilize industrial and agricultural production, which leads to the creation of jobs. They also create the Securities Exchange Commission to hopefully prevent the same issues that led to the crash from happening again. The President and his administration launch a combination of programs collectively known as the New Deal. Among these programs are the Tennessee Valley Authority, and the Works Project Administration, which altogether creates millions of jobs for those unemployed. They also create the Civilian Conservation Corps, which is a public work relief program. This program put millions of young men to work in forests and in parks. Despite a recession within the Depression, the economy is still on the slow road to recovery. America's industries are slowly but surely getting back into full production mode 
agriculture, factories, businesses, and trade levels are rising once again, allowing many, many individuals to return to work. Spending is back on the rise. Stock prices are rising once again. And most importantly, the banking industry is making its way back. The economy that was once shaken by economic disaster is in recovery. The American people are once again able to provide support for their families and for their lives.